Hello and welcome to the Underhive. We are back with some more How to Command the Death Guard. In this series, we're going to take a look at every aspect of the Death Guard. So whether you're looking to get more out of your army, or you're thinking of dipping a toe into Nurgle's crusty cauldron, then there's something here for you. In this episode, we're going to take a look at another competitive list, the fourth place securing uh, list by Daniel Radahase at the Palm Springs Open 40k GT by Dicehammer. So let's take a look at this list here. So the reason I particularly wanted to cover this list is because whilst a battalion detachment isn't particularly uh, out there for the Death Guard, very, very common, uh, but it is actually a ferryman detachment. Now, I very, very rarely play the ferryman. In, in fact, I think it's less than a handful of games that I've ever played with them. So I think it's really very interesting to see this list having done so well as to secure fourth place. So congratulations to Daniel on that. I think that is a fantastic result. So let's take a look at the list here. So in the HQ slot, we've got a Lord of Contagion and a Malignant Plague Caster. So of course, Lord of Contagion is a significant melee threat, and we'll come back to his upgrades in a minute. Malignant Plague Caster, nothing fancy on there, but a couple of spells. The troop slot is quite exciting though. We've got 40 Plague Marines, uh, four times 10 man squads. And uh, when we get through the rest of the list, it will explain specifically why these Melter Guns are in there but otherwise quite straightforward with the Plague Marine loadout. We've got a squad of 20 Pops Walkers rounding out the troop slot. In the elite slot, we've got two times, three, uh, two times four man squads of Death Shroud, uh, and both of the Death Shroud champions have some upgrades on there, so very nice. For the rest of the elite slot, so technically they'll only take up one slot, because three Fetid Virion can take up a single elite slot but he had them to spare anyway on the elite slot here for the battalion uh we've got the biologus putrefier as he comes we've got the tallyman as he comes and we've got the foul blight spawn again with some upgrades that we'll come back to and then finishing out the list there we've got chaos spawn uh, well three chaos spawn there coming in at 69 points and a fetid bloat drone with the flesh mower, of course. So the list coming in there at 1999. Uh, I think if I was building this list, I probably wouldn't have landed on Chaos Spawn. I think I'd have more likely gone with uh, 10 squad of Pox Walkers, and that would have left enough points for a second bloat drone with flesh mower. Uh, but that's not to say that I think this is wrong. The Chaos Spawn do do a very different role in that this squad of pox walkers could maybe spread the sickness on the home objective, and then it has a good enough number of bodies that it should survive a reasonable amount of shooting, perhaps bring in some back to generate extra movement during the command phase, and then move them on to another objective outfield to spread the sickness again, while the Chaos Spawn could remain protected, presumably behind some kind of terrain, so that they can't necessarily be shot down, and are actually a reasonable unit in melee to threaten anything that the opponent might try and either strike in, or a fast unit that can move up the board and look to take away your home objective. Of course, I wasn't there, so I don't know exactly how it was used, but looking at the list, I think that's probably how I would use the Chaos Spawn. But of course, on certain maps where you've got direct, you know, just I can move forwards to the central objective, you could also use them to trade out early on the central objective, getting on there in your first turn with an advance, and then weathering whatever the opponent has, but forcing them to have to deal with these Chaos Spawn, or potentially letting you score the maximum 12 on the primary in your second turn. So just going back to the uh, the characters here and their various upgrades. So of course the ferryman there, we haven't got the warlord tray or the relic. So the reason for the ferryman being picked is almost certainly the stratagem, which would allow you to pick one of your fetid virion, pick one of their auras, and extend that by six inches until your next command phase. So it's both for the rest of your turn and for the opponent's turn that battle round or perhaps the next battle round if they went first so on the lord of contagion here of course he's not going to be able to benefit from that stratagem so although we've got arch contaminator here we've also got fulgaris's help 
Arch Contaminator on a Fetid Virion would be a reasonable aura to extend, uh, but as we'll see in a minute when we come back to them, there are some other good choices in this list that you may want to extend in any given matchup. So having Arch Contaminator up to 9 inches with the, the benefit of Fulgaris Helm means that that Lord of Contagion can be right in the centre of the battlefield and very likely providing that Arch Contaminate above to many of these Plague Marine and Death Shroud squads. But he's also a Terminator, so he could strike in with the Death Shroud and immediately be giving them the Arch Contaminate above um, without them needing to be right next to him. Uh, chances are, if you are striking him, you'd probably keep one of the squads nearby to give him that character protection. Um, but he is fairly tough, so you wouldn't necessarily need that. Uh, he's also being run with the Plague Reaper, so that's the heavy uh, weapon, so it's strength 8, AP minus 3, damage 3, it is a minus 1 to hit, but with the benefit of Acidic Malady on top, which is an additional uh, AP, I will just double check that, but I'm 99% sure that one is additional AP, never going to find the page when I want to though. There we go. Acidic Malady, yeah, an extra AP. So that is up to AP minus 4 and flat damage 3. So if he does get into melee with anything, he is really going to do a number on it. On the Malignant Playcaster here, a bit of a strange choice in the Gift of Plagues. Now, I think for me, the reason I would run Gift of Plagues in this list is to allow the Plague Marines using these Melters to get an enemy unit in range of minus 1 toughness. Because we haven't got a Contagion Warlord trait here, so there's no like obvious pick that would benefit by extending the range. You're only extending the minus one toughness. However, if we're talking about you know toughness eight vehicle or monster that is a prime target for melter guns, um, they would need to be within 12 inch for this weapon. So once we're into turn three and the Contagion range is six inch anyway. Adding another 6 inch means that if that squad is in range to shoot the melter guns, they are also in range to minus 1 toughness that target. So a toughness 8 goes to toughness 7, you're wounding them on 3s with these guys. So that could make all the difference. Particularly if we've got the Tallyman alongside, he doesn't have the Toll Keeper, so he's not got an aura. So he's not going to be getting the, um, the stratagem used on him. But plus 1 to hit to a core unit could be very effective on a melter squad when you know you're going to be getting a good wound roll as well, possibly through the use of Gift of Plagues. And then Miasma of Pestilence, a pretty staple pick. I don't think you can go wrong with minus one to hit. Your opponent can play around that as long as you, you know, if you've not positioned incredibly well and left them with only one target. But dissuading your opponent from shooting one of these squads and instead shooting another one may well allow them to claim an objective for an additional turn. And that can be very relevant, even though they've not had to shoot into the minus one to hit uh, or attack into it potentially as well. Uh, because it isn't just shooting, it is, it is both melee and shooting. Um, so the uh, Plague Marines here, we've got the best loadout for the champion, in my opinion, Plasma Gun and Fist included. Um, not upgraded to the Plague Blade, but probably wouldn't have been using it either way. We've got one Blight Launcher, so I mean, you could prox spread the sickness with it. I don't think you really need it in this list. It only really benefits the Chaos Spawn, and I don't feel like they are there to get damage done when you look at the rest of the list. Uh, but of course... You might want it in a given turn where they really need to kill something. So having that Blight Launcher there just to pop it once before the fight phase could allow these guys to be re-rolling their wounds. Of course, the, the hideous mutations uh, that they can get, one of them would give them that benefit anyway, I believe. I don't play Chaos Spawn an awful lot, so I will double check that. Uh, so... Uh, Yes, so a toxic hemorrhage, so the result of three on the D3 uh, till the end of the phase, each time a model makes uh, makes an attack, you can re-roll the wound roll. So I don't imagine they'll have used cyclic, ero uh, yeah, cyclic erosion very often, if at all, uh, but the option is there if you felt you needed it by having the Blight Launcher. Uh, we've got six with two Cleaver, two Flail, two Mace and Axe, very common now. Um, some really good weapon profiles there, so can't deny that that's good for melee. And then, of course, the two Melter Guns. As we've said, there's no heavy support in this list. There's no long-range firepower. So having those Melter Guns in and around some enemy vehicles or monsters 
can get the work done even if a charge isn't going to be possible that turn of course they are assault weapons so you've still got two melter shots and two blight launcher shots in each of these squads even if they're advancing if they're just moving up you've also got the plasma gun shot and then the ability to charge um, so I think chances are for the first turn, you're pretty much always advancing, even if the melter guns won't get in range. But as long as you can get on some objectives there, it puts your opponent in the position where they've got to do something about it, or they're just going to let you run away on primaries. The elite slot is where things get the most interesting, I would say. So, of course, we've got the Death Shroud Terminators here. So both of these squads have got some significant mortal wound output. Uh, this first squad more than the second. So we've got the Plague Skull of Glyphilla there. So you roll seven dice. Anything above a three is a mortal wound. Sixes is D3 mortal wounds. So you expect a handful, maybe four or five mortal wounds on average. Uh, but you can do a lot better than that if you're lucky. We've also got Virulent Fever on this particular death route. So that's taking him up one strength as well. Um, so he'll be able to hit strength eight and strength six on his two profiles. Even without something like um, a, a putrescent vitality. Which of course isn't in the list. And then the other Death Shroud has got the Reaper of Glorious Entropy, um, which is essentially a Plague Reaper with the added benefit that sixes to wound deal more wounds. On top of that, that is the single use per turn effect of the Biologus Putrefier. So whilst he isn't going to be striking in like Terminators, if they are starting out on the board or they don't strike in too far into the opponent's deployment, uh, or sorry, into the opponent's territory, their half of the board, um, then the Biologus Putrefier may well be in range to, to give them that within six. Otherwise, the Plague Marine squads here, if it is still a full squad, um, even these Melter Gun guys still make two attacks, same with the Blight Launcher. Um, so we've then got three attacks on the rest. It's, I think, 33 attacks off the top of my head. Um, so that is going to be um, more than the heavy profile on the Terminators, uh, but less than the light profile. Yeah, because it'd be 24 plus uh, it's 10. Yeah, 34. So it would be more attacks on this squad. Um, this guy doesn't have a light profile because it's just a, essentially a Plague Reaper, not a Man Reaper. So these guys maybe are going in for the heavy target, whereas these guys might perhaps target some elite infantry where they can get away with the lighter profile now and again um, to, to reap the benefit of those mortal wounds, maybe. Uh, but saying that, against the lighter target, you wouldn't necessarily need the mortal wounds, so there's still argument for that going on the heavy guys, even though it's potentially less attacks. Uh, the Vile Blight Spawn does, of course, have an aura, which is to give his Blight Grenade, Hyper Blight Grenades out to uh, core units with Blight Grenades. So, uh, of course, extending that to 12 inches could hit two, three, four of these Plague Marine squads. Now, sadly, the output for Blight Grenades is not what it was back in 8th. So, I mean, they're only going to be throwing one per squad, but one Hyper Blight Grenade per squad is actually quite a lot of, uh, of output. And once they're in engagement range, if the Biologus Putrefier is in range to, uh, to benefit their grenades, I'm certain that the Blightening will have been used in at least one of the games, dishing out 18 auto hits from that squad uh, at uh, strength 4, AP minus 1, damage 2. So, of course, even though it's not that high strength, given they're in engagement range, they are going to be minus 1 toughness. So that wound roll might be okay, at least. Uh, and then from there, of course, you've got the AP other than into Armor of Contempt and flat 2 damage deals with a lot of stuff. Uh, so overall, I don't think the Biologus Putrefier was the main beneficiary of the Ferryman stratagem, uh, but there probably were games where it was a consideration because maybe it got another Plague Marine squad to benefit from it and they might well have thrown a Blight Grenade if they could. Uh, possibly instead of, you know, even instead of the plasma gun or maybe just one of these guys if they were in range because, of course, they're not shooting anyway. Um, but the Foul Blight Spawn here is is the most interesting unit for me, not only because I, I do like a Blight Spawn, I am a, I am a Spawn enjoyer, um, but we've got a lot, of, uh, a lot of moving parts here. So, of course, the Foul Blight Spawn's base ability, um, which is to make a unit within three inches fight last, uh, that is not an aura, so that's not going to be getting extended in any way. That is still within three inch. 
However, Living Plague and the Aura from Revolting Stonefarts are Auras. So we can go up to a maximum 9 inches with Living Plague, meaning that any enemy units within range of that do not get the benefit of any Auras that they would otherwise have received, other than Psychic Powers. We mentioned that when we talked about this Warlord trait individually, that it's a bit unfair if it removes Psychic Powers as well, because your opponent had to get the roll as well as like being in range and it'd be the right unit to get that buff, etc. But they had to get the roll. They, you will have had a deny. You've got a Psyker, so you will have had at least a deny to use. And then, of course, if it goes off, is a bit mean to steal it off them at that point. But if we rule out the Psychic Power buffs, there's still things, you know, like Chaplains, Lieutenant-style characters. Of course, many other factions have that. Reroll ones to wound in an aura, reroll ones to hit in an aura. Um, chapter master rerolls isn't an aura, so you won't be denying that. Um, but certainly the the captain sort of rerolls uh, that would be. So you can get rid of a lot of nice effects there, um, and particularly units like chaplains. I love a good chaplain in a space marine list, uh, but chaplains very much do not like to see living plague. So if you did come up against something like maybe dark angels, perhaps a, a lot of um, deathwing terminators, maybe a deathwing chaplain, um, that would see to removing some of those aura benefits. And when that's not the case, when there isn't a lot of auras going on for the units that are nearby, you could perhaps just extend revolting stench fats to 12 inches meaning that anything that gets anywhere near the location of the blight spawn is not counting as charging uh, chances are you've got some some number of squads of plague marines probably two at least in and around that area and as a result these guys probably are the ones taking the charge and they will then get to hit first in a lot of cases um, there are there are reasons why your opponent could still fight before that if they count as fighting first they don't need to charge to get that benefit necessarily so in that case something like Empress children could still attack into you beforehand but otherwise it removes a lot of buffs from a lot of factions that like to count as charging and in many cases it will effectively mean that you can fight first outside of the ability to interrupt because it doesn't stop your opponent interrupting. Um, so overall, I really like this list, and recently I've been kind of going over Elite. Um, not necessarily to the point that it's a detriment, um, but certainly a limiting factor. Uh, having this quantity of models on the board and this number of units, um, it's not necessarily that many more than a typical list I'd run, but it is more units, which means that something like Despoiled Grounds as a secondary becomes that bit more achievable, because even if only two of these Plague Marines survive to the end of the game, that's still a unit that can go out be near an objective, be on an objective, have contagion range in, in uh, on an objective, uh, be in a quarter of the board, be in your opponent's deployment zone. So, so scoring the max on Despoil Ground is probably a lot easier for this sort of list than the sort of thing I've been running recently, uh, just by virtue of having more units. Uh, it's not to say that definitely would have been taken. I think Fleeing Vectors was probably taken in almost every game other than against skew lists, if any were faced. Uh, where you probably prefer to bring it down against knights or what have you. Um, and Spread the Sickness is almost a guarantee anyway. Uh, spread, spread the Sickness is a very good uh, secondary. Um, but of course, we've got the Poxwalkers there to maybe do one or two of them. And then Plague Marines, even the Death Shroud. You probably don't want to use the Death Shroud if you can help it. But there's a time and a place where the Death Shroud scoring your four points on an outfield and ob objective is worth. Um, they are also uh, a good uh, overwatcher, so again, I don't mind having my Death Shroud or the area of the board where the Blight Spawn is. I don't mind having them charge. I'm quite happy to sit on the objective with all that obsec and go, well, if you want to come in and get hit first before you get to hit me, do it. Because I'll probably still be holding the objective afterwards and you'll have fed me a Blightening target for the Putrefier to Hyper Blight Grenade whatever squad uh, is still in engagement with you so uh, overall i think it has access to a variety of stratagems that can really change a game if they come off well um, and it's just brilliant to see 40 plague marines in a list uh, i don't think you'd have ever seen uh, a fourth place 40 plague marine list in nephilim before 
for the balanced data slate. Um, I could be wrong on that. And, you know, if somebody can prove me wrong on that, please do let me know. Uh, but I just don't think you'd have seen this if you were paying 300 points for this squad, uh, which you would have been. So, uh, so yeah, to, to see this list, we've, we've effectively got 400 points worth of value in these upgrades that wouldn't normally have been there. And I think that certainly helps with this, uh, what I would call quite a, an innovative list. I might be, again, I might be wrong on that. This might be a similar list to something that's that's done well recently, but I think that's quite innovative. It's not the way I'd have approached it, and I am quite interested to give this list a go. As I mentioned, I don't own any Chaos Spawn, so I, you know, I wouldn't be running them IRL. I would probably just cut 10 Pots Walkers and chuck another Flesh Mower in, um, and that would work for me. Well, I'd love to hear what you think, uh, so please do feel free to get involved with the comments. Uh, if you want to leave a like or a sub, it really helps me out. You know how YouTube works, but I wanted to let you know I really appreciate you taking the time to do that, so thank you so much. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time in the Underhive.